Okay, it's a good morning from myself as I'm here on my own in the studio. Take yourselves ready for this workout by letting me know you're in the room, then I'll know who it is to appeal to in terms of my cueing. Your workout today, um, there are two. We're going to do two parts of the Pilates repertoire. Good morning, Diane and Tom. Two parts of the Pilates repertoire that we've been doing. This finishes this week. So the sequence I put together that we've been working on over the last two weeks, this being the final week, is becoming bite-sized and also able to add a little bit of a prop, the prop being the yellow band, okay? So good morning, Sarah, too. You're gonna work on the different parts of the series with the flow sill, but the idea being that if all you've got time for is 20 to 30 minutes max, then you'll be able to do it in four different parts. You might do beginning of the day, you might do two parts together. Whichever way today, I'll do video 155 followed by 156. This one is 155. We're using the yellow band as the setup if you want to. I've folded the yellow band in half. You know it's February, don't you? We're inching our way towards spring, for which I'm very happy. So if you've got a yellow band, morning Leslie and Michelle, to let your yellow band go in half and once you've done that, pull it behind the pelvis, behind the pelvis, behind the bum cheeks in other words. Hi Lindsay and Jane. And you're holding your band, it's, it's relatively short now, it feels quite tight, but it's created a strong connection with the, what will end up being the sit bones, the back of the pelvis. This is a bite-sized version of it. You can do two workouts today for the, um, for the moment, or you can just do one and then one later on. Morning Maria too. You've got your hands by your sides. By using the band, you can keep your upper arms by the sides of your rib cage. Your feet are in parallel and you're ready there, taking the standing position and breathing deeply in and out. Good morning, Patricia. This is a four part workout this week. Two parts will be today and two parts on Wednesday. Pilates repertoire. So breathe your way into the month. Your inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. As you start your standing moment, relax the collarbones, front of the chest, but gently feel tension um, the, across the upper back and allow your elbows to sense that they're pointing to the hip bone area. And then when you're ready, push into that band as you inhale into your squat and breath out. Use the band to almost help you pull your hips forwards. Inhaling, push into that band. Good morning, Helen and Andy and Patricia, exhaling and up. We're using the yellow band to tune into where the pelvis actually is. Hopefully ending it with a brilliant neutral spine length with the breathing muscles finding the core and the ground. Remember this sequence. It's like doing the football work in reformers. Your heels are on the football as you slide in and you're pushing away. So on the reform you'd be sliding towards the bar, pressing away from the bar. The thigh bones stay perfectly parallel and you've got all the time in the world to tune into that wake up moment, what your body's actually doing. This is all about tracking from the ankle through to the knee, through the hip and core breath. The breath therefore, making sure that you're not tucking under, keeping your back stability by using your core. So the inhale and exhale therefore, core connecting you, making sure no back extensors are working. Good morning Lorna. We're all gradually coming into the room, a little bit sleepy maybe. Inhale down, I'm deliberately doing a few more squats than I normally would to allow everyone to find their form. Go down and stay people. So you, you haven't moved your arms at all. In this downward phase then, you've got the inhale, push down an inch, push up an inch, breath out, push down an inch, push up an inch. Keeping your shoulder blades connected through the mid at rhomboid leg traps but continuously pulling the navel to the spine, getting the transversus wall to connect with you. As you push and pull the ground away, nothing is in the lower back. If it is, nothing's in the mid back. If it is, you aren't course stabilizing, so it's worth resetting up, and neither should it be in your knee joint. Okay, people, and push the ground away. Going to position two, which is that slight turnout. You've got to imagine the foot bar again, and inhaling down, exhaling back up. Keep going, inhale, down you go. The same arm movement happens. 
Now you could have your hands slightly wider to mimic where the thigh bones have gone. You're in a lateral rotated thigh position as you pull the ground to you and push away. Think of your reformer. When you're lying on your back on your reformer, your pelvis stays true on the back of the ribcage spine and the skull. Now obviously doing this standing, as I lose a bit of my band, doing this stood is much harder than doing it on the reformer, but you want to get it to feel as natural um, rather than a big workout. Inhaling, hinging at the hip, making sure there's no pelvic tilting or imprinting. Um, I know there's certain people in the room that naturally tuck under. I think you know who you are. So if ever I've said to you, if ever, like always, um, please right now desist. That'd be Helen McGee, Andy Lockwood, and Patricia Creamer, and Thomas Bathgate. Okay, we go down, including down. In fact, most of the people tuned in are bendy wenders. In other words, they don't know how to hold neutral easily. We're going down to stay, and then we go down an inch and up an inch. Obviously, I've changed my view to give you just a little bit more information on the position. You're still pulling your shoulder blades towards each other as you pull the ground to you and push away. We're now waking up what we call the glute med muscle, breathing in and breathing out, finding that sense of connection. Just do two more. Keep the breath going. Good morning, Debbie. And last one. And now push the ground all the way away. Final setup then is your lunge. Find yourself into parallel. Step the leg back and find a single leg position. So single leg, you're going to lunge backwards. Keep the back leg on the ground. I'm not going to let you lift it off the ground. Remember, if it doesn't feel correct, in other words, the load stays in the hamstring side bottom of your front leg. The back leg is light. The yellow band should help you trunk stabilize and keep the hips, pelvis from twisting. You've just got two more there with your heel pointing to the ceiling on that back leg. Last time, and step up. Find your squat, step back, find your first side of the type of lunge. Remember, this is like scooter. You're keeping your diagonal line as you lower down and push away. Inhaling down, lovely loud squeak from next door, industrial unit. <laughs> Inhaling, hinging back, breath out, push back up. Pulling yourself backwards, pulling yourself forwards. The ground being pulled down and pushed. Two more, keep your shoulder blades towards each other, elbows pulling back. Last time, using the band, and up you go. Okay folks, time for our Pilates repertoire. You won't need your band for the first bit, but keep it um, available. And if you do use a head cushion, keep that available too. You've got your all fours position, your hands are under your armpits, your knees are under your hips, you spread your fingers, find the breath in, and as the breath out, we're going into our cat stretch, separate out, in, out the spine, one vertebra at a time. Inhale deeply there, breathing out, tailbone starts to move first, traveling you through the spine, into extension. Pull your shoulder blades away from the, um, the collarbones, go wide. Exhale, zip and hollow the abdominals. Start the tailbone end, the lumbar, and then traveling through. Remember the ground is under the hands and the shins and you need to feel the push of those limbs as the spine finds its range. And then inhale again, exhaling, we go through tailbone first, the ability to keep grounded with both the knee joints, shins and the hands is really the essence of true Pilates connection. People, for the next breath out then, find yourself out of what we call extension and float to your neutral pelvis or your sense of straight back. This is where we go straight to Superman, so you've got your two point position as the right leg, left arm goes out, graze back and forwards. Inhale, graze the floor under you, breath out, press away. Same leg each time, same arm. And the ground is under your shin and your hand of the opposite sides, obviously. Okay, we have this last one. 
Inhaling to graze the ground with the knee and the fingers. Exhaling, return. Find your center again. Connect with the ground. Left leg, right arm. Inhaling as they slide in the ground back to your hand on your knee. Breathing out as though you're pushing the ground away with the kneeling leg and the hand. This is a set for the um, trunk stability and is of more significance than you could ever imagine in terms of the ability to do this. But you only get good at this when you constantly expose your body to it and there's absolutely no movement of the pelvis, the spine, it's completely stable. And let that go. You're ready for the right leg going out again and the left arm reaching forwards as I do what I call the imprint. So breath out, pelvic tilt, pull the knee and you and pull the left hand to the knee, inhale and reach the straight line. Exhaling, shrink the tongue, slight bend of the rib cage. Don't make it a big round back. It doesn't want to be an earthquake to the spine, it wants to be a gentle connection to your oblique core. Exhaling, push the ground away with the legs, leg and arm that's connected to the ground. Inhale and extend and lengthen without disturbing the spine. Last time. And you're ready to change sides. Left leg, right arm, that's your setup. Breath out, imagine a pelvic tilt. Hand to knee, breathe in and reach. You can only reach the leg on the arm as far as you can maintain joint stability. The joint stability is all internal, external obliques, transepts, lats and struts as your armpits. And the breathing still is primary, as is known under the hand and the shin, where the ground is. And back to all fours, going back to the other side for our single leg. Now we have a three point position. Inhale, point the toe to the ceiling, flex the heel to the bum and push the leg away. So breath in, you go one, two, breath out and reach. Sniff, sniff and reach. Keep pushing the ground away. If this has gone into your back or you find that you're jolting yourself, you haven't got your core, so slow it down and ultimately, in the next week, we'll be doing this on the line front position. Okay, we have the other side. Grounded, neutral, armpits connected, leg reaches, three point kneeling, toe to the ceiling, heel to the bottom, and extend. Sniff, sniff, exhaling. The demand is on the pelvic floor and the obliques to cooperate. Inhale, exhale. One, two. You don't want to collapse anywhere, and the reaching out of the leg is your hamstring stability, posterior pelvis, and let that go. Finally, changing legs again, heel to the ceiling, flexed ankle. You found your hamstring curl, so your heels to your bottom. Inhale, graze the ground, exhale, send it back. Tune in to pushing the ground away with the shin and the hands from the armpit. As your thigh opens at the hip as it goes upwards and flexes at the hip. If you're doing this accurately and not moving the pelvis in and out of neutral, you'll get your hamstring to wake up particularly on the upwards phase, and you've been mobilising your hip, and we're changing sides. Are we ready? Heel to the bum. Don't assume both sides do exactly the same range. As you inhale, feel the three-point kneeling. There's lots of noise, so I'll raise my voice. Exhale. Your pelvis, lumbar spine, Rib cage goes nowhere except breathing expansion and contraction and your effort really is registered in the hamstring muscle of the leg that's mobilising the hip. Pushing the ground away and let that go. 
Oh my goodness, it's noisy. Lie on your front then. I've changed my position in terms of orientation. This is your swimming. We'll do legs only. So you make a cushion with your fingers on top of fingers. You pull your crown of your head forwards and shoulders away. You stretch the legs out so that they're straight. Breathing out to get your pubic bone dominant. Ribcage and over spine. Let the left leg lengthen to the point where it just lifts and then exchange to the right leg. And you're going. Inhale, switch, switch. Exhale, switch, switch. This is swimming legs. And if your pelvis is moving, then guess what? You're not swimming. You're just doing wriggling around. The length and the reach is the space return that's required for the hip. And the emphasis is on getting the hamstrings to lift you and lower you, keeping an open hip. People with tight hip flexors, you won't go very far. My hip flexors are relatively tight. I am lordotic. And my sensation in this movement pattern that's so essential to my form is the leg thigh bone reaching out to the pelvis of my pubic bone dominant. Do me three more whilst there's banging going on. <laughs> okay, last two. And let that go. Now pull your heels to your bottom. You can see I've got a slight lateral rotation going on. Find your pubic bone dominant. Have nothing in the long spine. Heel squeeze prone then. Breathe out. Core connect. Find the ground under the pubis as the heels squeeze and the thigh bones lengthen. An almost imperceptible movement. I'm going to keep my head to the side just to talk. Breath out. Thighs reach away from the pelvis, but the pubic bone is dominant. Remember, those of you that find you go into your lower back with this, simply have a pad under your hip bones towards the navel, not under the pubis. Check your legs don't naturally roll away from your bum. Exhaling. Find that side bum squeeze. Inhale, return. Last time. And then send your legs out and away. Here we are for swim. So your arms are reaching. Crown of the head is lengthened. Toes and legs are reaching. Get yourself feeling pubic bone dominant, thigh bones long. Right arm up, left leg up, and exchange. Contralateral, strong, strong legs, lengthening and lifting, lengthening and lifting, and there's no shift of pelvic position. Inhaling, pick up the pace, exhaling. If you pick up the pace and it goes into your lower back, then slow the pace down. It means you're not using your shoulder stability or your rib cage oblique connect through your core. Okay? This really is therapeutic, restorative, and as you go with where your body actually can, you return all sorts of postural muscles back to where they belong. People let that be at the end of that. Hands under your chest, and you're ready for B. Um, lying on your back, I'll get a different trajectory. I'm going to not use a head cushion. If you use a head cushion normally, actually, I will. If you're used to using a head cushion, find one. The yellow band will come into play again here. <coughs> Forgive my coffee. So, you're lying on your back. Find your band so that it's its full length again and put it around your feet. Have it flat, take the time to do this properly. We're going to use this for two or three exercises in this um, section. This is known as section B. Section A was all fours and lying on the front. Section B is this. So you hold your band. You've done this plenty of times before. This is just a rehearsal reminder. Kneecaps are level. I'm holding my band by the sides of my knees. Breathing out then, pelvically, imprint the lumbar. You've got enough tension on the band then to exhale, curl, nose to navel, breathe in and uncurl. Your elbows bend and you can gently pull against the band. Now, do not pelvically tilt more just because you're pulling 
against your legs where the band is, but do roll the rib cage spinal as you pull your elbows down to your hips and float them away. So you're moving your rib cage in the direction of the navel, you're not moving your navel towards your ribs. The band is there to assist symmetry of movement and also to help people that are stiffer and therefore weaker in the upper oblique. We're going to build this up then, inhaling down you go, breathing out as you roll your shoulder blades away, extend the band, legs, inhale, watch those knees come back and stay up there, exhaling, reach. Now because you keep your rib cage up, shoulder blades off the ground to the tip of the scapula, you're able to use the band to help you maintain flexion. If this still goes into your neck, even though you've pulled your chin to your throat and pushed your navel, sorry, to your spine and your nose pointing to your pubis, then you need to keep uncurling and uncurling. Okay, people, the next time your legs are out there, stay. Check you're still in imprint. Now inhale, pull those legs up towards the ceiling. Exhale, lower them down. My arms don't go anywhere. I'm letting the band guide my symmetry by holding onto the band. So whilst I could do this without the band, what I can't do is regulate for the marginal shifts I get where my pelvis twice tries to do a little bit of a twist. So here I'm prepping my obliques to work strong and with symmetry. Last time, and then pull your knees into your chest. Okay, everyone, we're going to do full roll down, but to do it, I'm going to start as seated. The band is still um, around the feet. Your feet can be pulled apart slightly, and you're going to bend your elbows, <coughs> crown and head to the feet. Elbows are pulling backwards, so my band has got energy in it. Start to breathe in to roll off your sit bones. Still stay flexed at the rib cage, mid to lower back. Lay the spine down with strong, strong legs, the band assisting. And breathe in and get your shoulder blades down. Exhaling, start to bend your elbows, not your chin. Keep the elbows by the sides. Keep your legs strong. You can bend them if you need to. But roll up making sure both arms and band used equally. Inhale there, start to roll off your sit bones, breath out, pubis, tilt, hip bones roll away from the femur, elbows feel as though they're drawing down in towards the top of the hip bone, and I lay the spine down with absolute symmetry. Huge inhale, exhaling, chin nod, bend your elbows, bend the ribs. Elbows are pulling down into the press of the erect. I come into forward rolling over my thighs. I go back again. Take four breaths if you need to. On the deepest part of it though, use your exhale to create more pelvic floor and oblique connection. As you go down, chill out at the shoulders. This is your last one. So rolling up, letting the bands calibrate you into symmetry and you're up tall. Going to use the band now for your seated spine twist. Let one arm stay more relaxed by the hand by the knee and then exhaling pull your elbow back and then back and then back you've created the twist through the shoulder inhaling and allow the energy in the band to pull you back to centre. Exhaling we go one sniff Exhale, and inhale. You use the energy in the band to, to mobilize you back to center. Exhaling. <sighs> Growing taller, not leaning backwards. One arm band relax, one arm tension through the armpit obliques and center. And we go. You can take it as a sniff, inhale, 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 and an exhale into center. Try that version. So, keep the shoulder away from your neck, and back. Once more each side, folks, see if you can find the contribution the band makes to your movement quality. It should appear smoother and more articulate 
around the thoracic spine. You, less of a force and more of a find as you increase your natural range without leaning and return back to centre. Okay, slide yourself back to lying on your back. Just let the band go from your hands. You're now into your hip rolls. I've got my bottom close to my heels. Hip rolling spine work is to mobilise the spine. Hands are flat on the floor. The band is just there because it's there. It's not going to be used. The breathing out then, pelvic tilt, rolling the spine away, and then breathing in to take your spinal column down, creating length and space. Your ideal is to count the vertebra back so you find yourself in neutral. Remember that Velcro imagery? Exhaling, you feel stuck through the pelvic area through Velcro, and then you're going to pick away vertebra by vertebra, feeling equal push of the feet into the ground, thighs tight together, as you peel the spine, like taking Velcro from one surface to another. And then you want to imprint the spine in sequence, not coincidentally, but very deliberately. So you find yourself rolling through your imprint into your neutral. Inhale, you're at the bottom, you're in neutral, you know where your feet are. Breathing out, pelvic floor. The picking up by pushing down first and then, as they're reluctantly lifting in sequence, one vertebra at a time. Perfect symmetry left to right. Inhaling and the reverse as the rib cage finds its journey first through the back of the spine, through the lumbar and you're down. Now from there folks, Come back up to stand, pick up your band. We have rolling like a ball. I'm gonna have my feet like this. Are you ready? Pull your band tight at the ankles and pull your feet up here. Exhale, pull the ribs in. Inhale, back as you go. Exhale, up to a balance. Remember what we've said? If you have osteoporosis, osteopenia, any bulging discs, you won't do this, you'll do your seated roll back, but for the sake of timing, I'm taking you through this, inhaling, exhaling, balance, and not twisting, one more as you go. From there then, take yourself down, you don't need the band, you may want your head cushion. Your final sequence here, is I'll change my profile for you again. It's your single leg stretch. You can have the cushion under your skull, pull both knees into your chest and curl up. This is the final moment of this bite size. Take hands to the outside of the shin, set up your left leg in a diagonal line as demonstrated by me, and then you switch. And switch, inhale, and then exhale. Don't let the leg drop. Keep your nose to your navel. Stay curled up as you can. One, two, one, two. Okay, your breath. Exhale, inhale, and knees to the chest. Head down, breathe. Ready for obliques. Keep both knees together, both hands behind the head. Turn to your right leg. Keep the right leg bent, take the left leg back to where it was in the previous activity, and then exhaling to change sides, inhale centre, shoulder blades off the ground, as you come through centre, it's an inhale bent legs, exhale very deliberate, obliques and obliques. You reach up to the inside of the thigh. You don't roll over onto the side of your armpit. Two more. One more. That's each side, obviously. And pull your knees into your chest. Double leg stretch, curl, pull the thighs in. Start to send the legs away as you take your hat off your head. And then circle your arms back. Inhale, exhale, hat off the head, nose to navel, 
You keep your shoulder blades off the floor. Last two. Every time you come back to bed legs, you can curl up a bit. Last one. And head down. Are you ready for scissors to finish? Take both legs up in the air. <coughs> if both legs are being straight up, there is two tens on the hamstrings. Have them lowered away slightly. So in this one then, exhale, curl. As you take one leg away, push one leg up. Slow motion, bring them past each other as you do scissors. You want to get the reach, reach. Um. Again, no snavel, reach, reach. Reach, reach. Reaching, reaching. Breathing, reach, reach. Crown the head to the ceiling. The arms offer that little bit of a so no one will have their leg to the ground because everyone should be reaching and keeping perfect imprint. Once more each side. And knees into your chest. Okay folks, you have just finished the first bite-sized part of what we did last week as a very full sequence. Bang on 30 minutes. Okay, take a breather. If you're doing the next video, fantastic. Take a five minute moment. Do that whole breathing release thing that we talked about, which is four breaths in through the nose. Suspend a breath for seven counts, exhaling over eight counts. And again, obviously I'm talking. <laughs> and I can't believe how out of breath I am. I'm a little bit wheezy today. Anyway, well done. <laughs> I'll see you in a few moments, okay? Be ready to roll again.